Hypothesis testing for the paired difference of two means using Excel. When we collect two measurements on the same sample and want to compare them, we use the paired difference of two means rather than the independent sample's difference between two means. Here are some examples of paired samples. Before and after trials for a weight loss program. The measurements are taken on one set of people at two different times before they begin the weight loss program and after a given amount of time. Each line in the data refers to one person for whom there are two measurements. These measurements are taken before and after. We are interested to know about the difference in the two measurements. Another example of a paired sample is sales each week by two different salespeople. Each line in the data refers to a week. In each week, there is a different figure for the sales for the two salespeople. We are interested in the difference in sales between the two people each week. So though the test is called two samples, it is in fact two measures taken on the same sample. We will now work through an example illustrating hypothesis testing and showing how to use Excel for testing for paired differences. Helen sells chocolatees. She is constantly trying to improve her marketing techniques with the help of her brother. She wants to be able to say that chocolatees take longer to eat than one of the competitor's products, Nutter Bars. She will ask for volunteers from her customers and time how long it takes to each one to eat a chocolatee and how long it takes to eat a Nutter Bar. She decides to follow the five steps, hypotheses, significance, sample, p-value, decide. The null hypothesis is that there is no difference in time taken to eat a chocolatee or a Nutter Bar. The null hypothesis is the thing she is attempting to prove wrong. The alternative hypothesis is that it takes longer to eat a chocolatee, or more rigorously, that the average difference in time taken to eat a chocolatee compared with a Nutter Bar is greater than zero. Together, the hypotheses look like this. We define D to be the mean population difference. We hypothesize about whether the value of D is different from zero. Because the alternative hypothesis has a greater than sign, not a not equal sign, this is a one-tailed test. Step two, significance. The second step is to decide on the level of significance. Helen chooses alpha equals 0 0.05. Step three, Helen samples 36 customers over the next two weeks and times how long it takes each one to eat a chocolatee and how long it takes to eat a Nutter Bar. She puts the data in a spreadsheet and gives it to us. In statistical analysis, it's always a good idea to get a rough idea of what the analysis will tell us before doing the tests. So to do this, we find the means of the two samples. In Excel, we use the average function for one column, then copy the formula to the other column. We can see that the two means are 72 seconds and 68 seconds. In the sample, it took four seconds longer on average to eat a chocolatee than it did to eat a Nutter Bar. If it happened that the mean value for Nutter Bar were greater than that for chocolatee, then it would be clear that the data will not support rejecting the null hypothesis. A sample showing that it takes longer to eat a Nutter Bar cannot prove that it takes longer to eat a chocolatee. A sample cannot support a hypothesis the opposite of what the data shows. However, it does look as if Helen might be right. It did take the customers in the sample longer on average to eat a chocolatee. But is that really enough evidence to be able to claim this as a fact for all customers? So now we go to the Tools menu and select Data Analysis. This time we wish to use the t-test paired to sample for means. We highlight the variable 1 range including the label. Then we highlight the variable 2 range and label. Be careful that we do include the labels and do not include the average value that we calculated earlier. The hypothesized mean value is zero as we are testing to see if the difference in time is greater than zero. If we leave this out, the program will assume that it is zero. We tick next to labels as we have included the labels in the variable ranges. We leave the alpha value as 0.05 and select the output range. 
Then we click OK, widen the columns and examine the output. We check that there is the correct number of observations and that the means are the same as those calculated earlier. Then we look at the p-value for the one-tailed test as indicated earlier. The p-value of 0 0.085 is greater than the alpha value of 0 0.05. We do not reject the null hypothesis. We do not have evidence to say that on average, for all customers, it will take longer to eat a chocolate than a nutter bar. Helen cannot make that claim. Does that make sense with the data? The difference of 4 seconds was not very large, so it is not surprising that we failed to reject the null hypothesis. The results of the statistical test should make sense with respect to the data. If not, you have probably made a mistake.